good morning students in this session we are going to discuss about fly ash properties and its utilization in concrete the course outcome of this particular specific topic is explore the chemistry behind the technology of building materials and the learning outcome is at the end of the session student be able to acquire the knowledge of fly ash and its importance in construction discipline students will be able to gain the knowledge of fly ash as a supplementary cementitious material and they'll be able to gain the knowledge of chemistry of fly ash and its importance for the long term usage what is fly ash fly ash is a fine powder produced as a product from the industrial plants using pulverized coal or lignite as fuel it is the most widely used pozzolan silicious or aluminum silicious in nature in a finely divided form the shapes are spherical shaped balls finer than cement particles and this is the image of fly ash under the scanning electron microscope all the spherical beads indicates the fine particles of the fly ash what makes fly ash useful fly ash is most important commonly used as a pozzolan in pcc applications pozzolans or siliceous or uh, siliceous and aluminous material which is finely divided form and the presence of water react with calcium hydroxide to ordinary temperature to produce cementitious product The unique spherical shape and particle size distribution of fly ash make it a good mineral filler in hot mix asphalt. The consistency and abundance of fly ash in many areas presents unique opportunities for use in structural fills and other highway applications. And what are the environmental benefits of fly ash? Fly ash utilization especially in concrete as significant environmental benefits the number one is increasing the life of concrete roads and structures by improving concrete durability number two need reduction in energy use and greenhouse gas and other adverse air emissions when fly ash is used to replace or displace manufactured cement number three reduction in amount of coal combustion products that must be disposed in landfills and number four conservation of other mineral resources and materials types of fly ash fly ash is categorized into two broad classes number 1 is class c and number 2 class f this class of fly ash has a high content of calcium oxide used as a standard alone stabilizing agent the strength characteristics of class c fly ash having a calcium oxide less than 25% can be improved by adding lime and the class f fly ash has a low calcium oxide content and class of fly ash has an insufficient calcium oxide content for pozzolanic reaction to occur it is not effective as a stabilizing agent by itself however when mixed with either lime or lime and cement the fly ash mixture becomes an effective agent apart from this the color of fly ash can be tanned to dark gray that depending on its chemical and mineral constituents tan and light colors are typically associated with the high lime content A brownish color is typically associated with the iron content. A dark gray to black color is typically attributed to the elevator unburnt carbon content. Fly ash's color is usually very consistent for each power plant and coal source. Let us have a discussion regarding the chemistry of fly ash. Fly ash consists primarily of oxides of aluminium, silicon, iron, and calcium. And even magnesium, potassium, sodium, titanium, and sulfur also present in a lesser degree. That is, in a trace amount, but the majority composition is due to the presence of silicon, aluminium, iron, and calcium. When used in mineral and mixture in concrete, fly ash is classified as either class C or class F, as we discussed earlier. As per the American Association of Standard Highway Transportation officials, it defines the chemical composition of class A and class B fly ash comprises of all these elements. Here. we highlighted the chemical composition of fly ash if you have a close look at the composition both fly ash uh, class f and class c is having a major composition of silicon dioxide next to that is aluminum oxide and the third one is uh, calcium oxide particularly in the class f whereas in uh, class c it is 24 uh, percentage and that is why class c is having a high percentage of calcium oxide content and there is a very traces or minimal of magnesium silicon i mean sulfur trioxides the chemical uh, composition of fly ash depends upon the type of coal used and method used for combustion of uh, coal 
physical properties of flyers. Fineness of flyers. As per the American standard, the fineness of flyers is to be checked in both dry and wet sieving. The flyer sample is sieved in 45 micron size. And percentage of retain on 45 micron size is calculated. Further fineness is also measured by Lee-Chatley method and the blend specific surface methods. Number two is specific gravity of flyers. The specific gravity ranges from a low value of 1.90 for a sub bituminous ash to high value of 2.96 for an iron rich bituminous ash. Shape and size of flyers. As a flyer is very fine material, the particle size range between 10 to 100 microns. This is measured through the same image. And it is usually spherical glassy shape. Color as we already discussed, in general the dark grey tinge to the fly ash is typically due to the unburnt content. Fly ash as a supplementary cementious material. SCMs are material that contribute to the properties of ordered concrete through hydraulic or pozzolanic activity. Flyers is a pozzolone that possesses little or no cementious properties by itself. Flyers will react with calcium hydroxides generated during cement hydration to form compounds having a cementious property. So it is almost resembles the mechanisms of uh, setting and rounding process of cement. And normal cement replacement flyers range from 15% to 30% by weight. Lead projects often specify cement replacement in the range of 40% to 60%. Here, the image of flyers and cement was compared, it's almost similar. So normally we used to mix around 30% by height of flyers in place of cement. Let us have a discussion regarding the short term and long term benefits of flyers. In short term benefits of concrete containing flyers, the number one is reduced heat of hydration. And number two is increased set time, decreased water demand. So this is the major uh, benefits of fly ash. So water demand is getting decreased. Number three is reduced bleeding. And it is easier to pump and increase workability at moderate replacement rate is that is less than 30%. Long term benefits of concrete containing fly ash is reduced permeability, reduced cost. Reduction in use of virgin raw materials. Let us have a discussion regarding our major long term benefits. Here we have shown a two images of uh, concrete, and this one indicates the increased sulfate resistance. And this is alkali silica reaction mitigation. This is the impact of alkali silica reaction. Let us have a discussion regarding this. M is presented of a considerably decreased rate of diffusion where fly ash is present and also stabilization of calcium aluminum hydrate resulting in increasing resistance to sulfate attack. Here the concept is the presence of calcium aluminum hydrate in the fly ash content. It will enhance the property of sulfate resistance. So that is a major benefits of fly ash. Number two, alkali silica reaction. What is this alkali silica reaction? It's commonly known as concrete cancer. It's a swelling reaction that occurs over time in a concrete between highly alkaline cement paste. If you closely look at this image, we can able to find some sort of lines in the concrete structure. The major reason is if there is a High alkaline content. The concept meaning of alkaline is nothing but high basic materials. It may be hydroxides or uh, carbonates, bicarbonates, something like that. But in particular, cementous material, the majority is uh, hydroxides. That is due to the presence of hydroxide cement paste. So, due to this uh, high content of alkali, there will be leads to the formation of some cracks in the concrete structure. And the reactive non-crystalline amorphous silica found in many common aggregates give a sufficient uh, moisture. And the other uses of uh, fly ash are listed below. It is used in the manufacture of Portland cement. And typically used for 
embankment construction like this for uh, construction of uh, dams bigger dams something like that and used as a soil stabilizing materials and number four fly ash is also used as a compound in the production of flowable fit number five used as the fill material in asphalt road line to fill the voids number six is used as a compound in geopolymers seven used in roller compact concretes dams used in the manufacture of fly ash bricks when fly ash treated with silicon hydroxide act as a catalyst and here we will like to discuss about the concept of quality assurance and quality control what is the criteria for designing the quality of fly ash because the quality of fly ash only plays a vital role in deciding its application in various disciplines or various properties of the replacement cement properties replacement number one the quality of each and every fly ash from a different source get varies so the specification of the fly ash also getting varies normally quality assurance and quality control criteria vary for each use of fly ash from state to state and source to source some states require certified samples from the silio on a specified basis for testing and approval before use others maintain lists of approved sources and accept project supply certification of fly ash quality the degree of quality control requirements depends on the intent use the particular fly ash and its variability testing requirements are typically established by the individual specifying agencies so as per the specification of american standards in general the major chemical requirements of fly ash for both class f and c is nothing but 70 to 50 percent ish and the loss of ignition is 5 percent maximum in both the cases and the optical chemical requirements is 1.5 percent ish and they have listed out some of the physical requirements for fineness water requirements autoclave expansion and uniform requirements density all those things and sometimes multiple factors that is uh, loss of ignition and increasing in uh, drying shrinkage and that should be 0.03 percentage to the maximum level and uniformity requirements are entering agent is maximum of 20 percentage both in class f and class 7 and cement alkali reaction motor expansion for 14 days is maximum 0.02 percentage in class f and the density and fineness of individual samples shall not vary from the average established by the 10 percentage test and these are the some basic quality parameters designed by different agencies but still we are following the american standards so as a whole fly ash is having a vital role in deciding the properties of many building materials and it is one of the most important replacement for cement is materials in order to achieve the properties of cement some of the criteria has to be fulfilled and all those things we are testing through the quality checking process so fly ash is one of the best material in future for the replacement of cement and other construction activities and that's all about the concept of fly ash and its uh, applications in construction department and overall conclusion we derive from this is its supply is vital to yasa mitigation sulfate attack resistance construction cost reduction that is very very important before doing a project the major thing each and every individual focus is more on the cost reduction and second thing is environmental impact natural resource preservation so thus fly ash is important and fulfilling almost all the requirements and it is a is a replacement for the cement to avoid this major issues such as asr mitigation sulfate attack resistance thank you